Okay, today I'm going to tie what I am calling the new beak fly. It is a pattern that was uh, developed by Doug Uematsu um, for fishing out there in Long Beach for Corbina croakers, things of that sort. Here's the fly here. Now, if Doug ever does watch this video, he may say that does not look like a new beak that he traditionally ties. And I would have to agree. Uh, this is a slight modification of it, but I, you know, just like you have different styles of clousers, I can't call this my own fly since it pretty much is a uh, just a modification of his fly. So I'm calling it the new beak. Anyways, it's a good fly. It, uh, in the bigger sizes, does really well for catching spotted bay bass, things of that sort. But in these uh, smaller sizes, it does well for catching uh, Corbina and other things that live there in Long Beach. So for the hook of choice for this one, it's a uh, Tiemco TMC 811S. Uh, this is a size 4. And the dumbbell here is a uh, 3 16th gold. So I'm just going to go ahead tie on my thread, which in this case is burnt orange ultra thread 140. So go back there. Since this fly, essentially, I'm first going to tie on my upper, you know, base is going to be inverted here, so I'm going to tie on the portion which is going to be uh, facing up, which in this case is this ice fur, and this ice fur is in the color of gotcha tan bonefish. So what you do here is you just measure it out about the uh, length of the hook shank. Tie it right behind the eye. As you can see here, the eyes are placed further back than you would traditionally see on, let's say, a clouser or such. But uh, this basically allows this fly to sort of glide through the water rather than being a jiggy motion, as you would see if you tied the dumbbell eye uh, close, close to the uh, eye of the hook. So the next material here is just a little bit of cream bucktail. Now Doug uses cream calf tail. Now if you can find that stuff, you'd be my hero. I can't find it and I was told that Doug actually dyes his own calf tail to get that cream color for his fly but it really doesn't matter it's it's the, the kind of the key to this fly is this uh, is this ice fur and uh, you'll see that in a second okay um, didn't add this in here but I'll add it in now this fly is meant to represent a, uh, a ghost shrimp that kind of lives there in Long Beach and, and also in the bays and estuaries. So the next thing you need to do is add in some, and these here are silicone micro leads, micro legs, and they're orange gold flake. And the company is Cascade Crest Tools. By far, by far, these are the best legs to use for, I think, any of the patterns that require um, silicone type synthetic legs. People use crazy legs or silly legs, and these those are nothing. These have awesome movement, awesome color patterns. If you can get a hold of these Cascade Crest legs, you'd be so much better off. Anyway, so this is basically going to be adding on a leg on each side of the hook, like like that. And what that does is it kind of splays them out a little bit. So this is supposed to imitate the uh, legs of the. Uh, little shrimp. So 
There you go. Now I advance my thread there. And my next thing I'm going to do is go and go ahead and just add in some little antennae on top. So I'm going to start here on the far end, do a little pinch wrap. And you can kind of see I get some nice little legs on the top there. I'm going to go ahead and add them in on this side now, right to the top. There you go, and I have these nice little antennas. Legs coming off the top there, looking good. Mr. Go Shrimp has some legs, has some nice color, colorations to them. So, I'm now going to go ahead and just advance my thread to the eye of the hook. But one thing I do advise is to get yourself some Zappa Gap. Now, I've used a lot of different stuff, and I'm starting to like the Zappa Gap only because it penetrates, it's really nice and penetrates the threads very nicely so when you bring this fly over into the sand bottoms, things of that sort, onto the eelgrass the threads don't begin to uh, come off so just go ahead and just evenly distribute that zap a gap and you're good to go alright, we're almost there um, Next. Material is going to be some uh, dyed pearl uh, diamond braid, and uh, a lot of companies make it. Um, this stuff I got here was at from Orvis, but uh, it doesn't. I think you can find this stuff anyplace. Basically, it's just the uh, dyed pearl diamond braid. I didn't show you this, but I probably should have. Diamond braid is kind of interesting material. It's basically when you buy it, it has a sort of just it's all wrapped together as one big one big kind of stringy mess. Well, what you do is just take one end of it out and you can kind of unfurl it. And by doing that, it creates these long, you see here, long strands of flash material that are really nice for doing wrapping, as in this case. Um, some people might say, well, I'll just use Crystal Flash. Um, I don't think Crystal Flash has these kind of colors, these bright, flashy colors that this one does. And I think that is just a nice little tone to that fly. And um, that's it. So you get your materials to the front of the eye. Go ahead and just tie it off. And just invert the fly. So there you go. So the last thing to do now is put in my other wing. So for this piece now, I'm gonna go ahead and just here's some more cream bucktail. Um, you can use different color bucktail, white, whatever. Uh, cream is one of the, to me the essentials for this. You want if you ever seen a ghost shrimp, they're translucent. They have some orange busting out different places. And these materials, basically, the way I see it, match that beautifully. So, you're going to go ahead there and just now take some pinch wraps. You want to set that bucktail on the shank, like such. Looking good. The last thing to do is, is take in my ice fur. And I swear, what you do is here's here I kind of cut straight, right? When I kind of cut it off on the end there. So all I do now is I just take the ends, pull it out, and what you're doing there is trying to create this nice little tapered effect. Something like that. And when you see when you wrap it down together, you get a nice little taper. So quite nice and quite easy. So what you do now is just match it to your to your bucktail. It's about there. Come back. I'll tie it off right in the front. Nice little taper effect. 
that's it. So, next thing I do is do a quick whip, whip finish here. And I do this by hand, I'm not sure why, but I want to try it. Sorry about that. There, I got it. So, one, two, three, four is fine for this fly. And you're good. Okay. I have the materials looking good. The last thing I'm going to do is come in again and hit these threads with some zappy gap. So there it is. This is a new beak modified a bit. It's a nice little ghost shrimp imitating pattern. Key elements, ice fur, cream bucktail, everything else. Go ahead and mess with it, but I would not change those couple items. Good luck. Thanks for watching. Bye.